Radio. Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you guys to our 14-year anniversary this morning at Mountain Movers Church. You know, we're so grateful for, for all the things that, that God has done. As Misty and I think back, you know, just across that creek in our mobile home, in our living room, 14 years ago, roughly, where we started with one couple. That couple was Monty and Kathy Keith and their children. In fact, Monty and Kathy, won't you, won't you guys come up here and join us for just a second? If you guys can make your way up here. I don't know if Kathy's somewhere close. All of them. Kids, too. Holton, Whitley. You guys make your way up here. Here's Kathy and Whitley. If you guys will make your way up here, I'm sorry, we lost our steps. We had to incorporate that as part of our camera setup. So you'll have to get creative as you guys make your way up to the stage today. If you guys would, give them a round of applause and show them your honor and love today. I I think back, you know, 14 years ago, and we had a really big dream and a really big vision but it started really, really small. And you think about the fact that, that we just started with a Bible study on our couch in the middle of a field. And we didn't have hardly anything, hardly any money. We had one couple. <laughs> and they had a baby. They had, a baby. They had Holton, <laughs> who, who now is Sasquatch, 15-year-old Sasquatch. But, you know, we started with very, very little, and when you look around and you just take in all that God has done over the years, it's just simply amazing. But not not just buildings. That's not even what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people. I'm talking about the lives that have been changed. And, you know, when when I think about how how we began and think about what God has done, it should cause each and every one of us to really think about how God will take just the littlest of things with just a little bit of faith and what he can do with that. And today we just want to honor Monty and Kathy. We want to thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts uh, for sticking it out. You know, it's hard. It's, we walk by faith and not by sight. If they would have walked by sight, we would have been in trouble because there wasn't much to see. And I remember one time Kathy saying, uh, you know, I, I really... I really hope that one day we can have like an actual kids church (laughs) rather than the kids having church in AJ and Ty's bedroom. (laughs) AJ AJ was the kids church leader and it was rough. It was rough. Let me tell you, (laughs) but you know, it was, it was hard in that moment. It was hard to see the Cape, the the God's, abilities and, and, and what he could do with just a, a little. And so we're, we're just so very thankful that you guys chose to, to hang in there and to be committed and to stick it out. And we've been through some really tough times, have we not? We've, we've, seen, we've seen miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. God has been glorified. And as people hear the story, it's said so oftentimes it had to be God. Amen. It had to be God. And so we just love you guys so much. We have uh, a gift for you today that just shows our love and appreciation. Love you guys so much. Thank you guys. And, and these kids, let me, let me tell you about Holton and Whitley. You know, they were babies when, when we started. And uh, that's right. She wasn't even born. It was just Holton. But man, that's a, that's a, tr- that's a way to grow a church, have babies. And, uh, <laughs> I was like, the church is growing, yes. But you know that these these kids, they did, it's kind of like our kids, really in the same boat. They didn't really have much of a choice, you know. They just kind of, they just joined the crazy and the chaos of a church plant without realizing what they were signing up for. And um, we just love you guys and we thank you. You guys have been faithful, and uh, God's obedience has paid off. Amen. <laughs> So we love you guys so much. You can go have a seat. Give them, give them some honor one more time. But, you know, I think, I think about Elisha and, and the widow woman. You might know the story. 
you know, she's having this big pity party. Her husband had passed away, and he was a prophet. He was a man of God. He was in the ministry. And the collector was coming to collect on the rent, and she didn't have any money to pay the rent. He was going to take her boys as slaves to pay for the mortgage for the house. And, you know, she's having this pity party just telling the prophet all these things that she didn't have. Right. How many times do you do that? How many times do we do that as we give God this laundry list of, of all these things that aren't right? We go down this list of all the things that we don't have. We have this pity party. But the prophet said to her, he said, he said, you've told me all the things that you don't have. But what do you have? And so she was really forced to just begin to survey her situation and have a reality check. And she realized that she had uh, a jar, <laughs> a little bit of oil. And God said, take what you have, and I'm going to take the little that you have mixed with a little bit of your faith. And if you'll just trust me, we'll see God do miracles among us. What is it that you have today? What's the little things that you have? Maybe God has, you know, I believe God has birthed a, a dream and a desire in, in, in each and every one of our hearts to do something incredible for him. I really do. Each and every one of us. I believe there are dreams that are dormant. I believe that are de there are desires that God has put in our hearts to do things for him. And, and, and unfortunately, there are many who leave this world never having fulfilled the ultimate dream and the desires that God has, had placed in their hearts. But I want to tell you, God can do so much with so very little. And I just want to ask you today, what do you have? Have you allowed a dream to die in your heart that God intended to grow and to flourish and to prosper? What is it that God has put in your heart? What little do you have where God can really use that to make something big and beautiful come out of it? God loves faithfulness. He loves it when we are just crazy enough to believe that he can do so much with so little. He says, if you'll be faithful in the little things, he'll make you ruler over much. I would just wonder today what it is that God wants to do in your life, in your family, in your marriage, in your career, in your ministry, whatever it is. Imagine what God can do if you'll just be faithful in the little things. He'll make you ruler over much. Over the last 14 years, we have seen literally, guys, thousands of people come through the doors of this church. Thousands. Literally. We, we, we've tried to calculate the best we can, but we can say that at least, at least 2,500 people have come to Christ. At least. Now, I think that deserves giving God some praise and art because it's only for his glory. Look out here in the middle of nowhere, how God is being glorified. If you'll just give God a little, just give God a little bit of your faith, a little bit of time and a little bit of your resources. That's right. When we planted this church, the number one value, and if you are here any length of time at all, you know that we say this all the time, but our number one value would simply be this, that God's presence would be prior, our priority. It didn't matter whether we had a building or whether we were outside in a field or under a tree or anywhere else. If God's presence is there, that's what changes lives. It's not what we say. It's not what we do. It's God's presence. And so today we're super excited that we can be out here on this side of the creek. This was a miracle in itself that God gave us this property on this side. And today we've invited a guest speaker to be a part of our celebration. And, you know, one of the things that we pride ourselves in is being relevant and creative. And I don't see much more creativity than bringing a corral in on a Sunday morning and bringing us all together as one big happy family, even in the chilly wind. But today we've got BJ Jordan with us from Crossroads Horse Ministry. He's going to come today and he is going to share. Um, and you are going to be amazed. I love it. All of our kids are here together. So we're just going to turn it over to him today. Well, uh, good morning. You guys doing all right this morning? 
I always, I got to get a feel for the crowd a little bit. Um, if you, if it's all right, I'm gonna set up here for a second. If I fall. Don't, don't worry about me. I'm pretty coordinated, or I used to be. So, um, so uh, first thing I want to do is just kind of introduce myself. Um, I'm actually local to. Um, I graduated from Neosho High School back in '98, and uh, always had a, a dream to. Uh, go west I guess you would say and uh, me and my wife and our kids went west about 20 years ago and we spend six months of the year in north central Colorado and then six months we have a little place over on B Highway by the May community out just west of Goodman but I always kind of had a passion for horses and dogs and cattle and all that kind of stuff which was a little bit of a different path than my family but also had a passion for the Lord and in my early 20s I was called to teach and I just uh, I told the Lord any opportunity I would always say yes first to speak and then find a reason if I just absolutely couldn't I just couldn't make it or whatever but we planned this pretty short uh, me and Brad did here and so we just talked about a week ago and said hey let's do this and so we're excited to be here my wife is here um, she is over here, um, the redhead over on that side of the corral. And then uh, Luke and I work together. We've worked together for quite a few years here. And then my daughter Lainey's here. But we have a son uh, that's married, lives in Goodman. And then I have a daughter that lives in Colorado with us in the summertime and lives in Knoxville, Tennessee. She got married last year. So anyways, that's who I am. I hope to get to meet you all kind of after this deal. But one of the things... Um, that comes along with kind of the cowboy culture um, is, is uh, unfortunately, pride. Pride can sometimes be kind of manipulated to look good, but most of the time pride comes with some pretty bad stuff. And uh, I, I just, I told the Lord that um, if I was ever not faithful with what he's allowed me to do with my hands and what I enjoy, I ask him to take it away from me because I probably won't be smart enough to give it up on my own. And just nothing's more important than our relationship with Jesus Christ. And so that's the creative thing we're doing today. And so I'm actually going to read a little bit, read a little bit out of the book of Ephesians before we even get started. Um, I lose track of time really bad. My wife's going to kind of let me know where we are timeline wise, but um I just kind of want to share with you um, my goal of my heart. So I'm going to read a little bit, a pretty common passage of scripture. I'll read a little bit in Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 2. But the goal for today, what this is and what this isn't. Um, this is not a dog clinic, okay? Um, there's a, we, we train dogs and we use them. We just run cattle and it's just fun to see their transformation and it's fun to use analogies, and I all the time would have them coming to me. I was like, man, I'd sure love to show how this reflects the Word through messing with these animals and share it with some, uh, some other people. So that's what we're doing. But um, the Apostle Paul <coughs> wrote a letter to the church of Ephesus in like 62 A.D. Okay, so like 29 years or something after... Um, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And it's a little bit different to some of his other letters where a lot of times there was correction involved and different things like that. But it really showed Paul's heart just as a his desire for the church at Ephesus to grow in their faith. And I didn't know that this was the 14-year anniversary, but the reason you would start a church is to help people grow in their faith, right? So my goal is that you grow in your faith this morning and there is no script we don't unfortunately the dogs don't always do what they want to we just yell at them less when we're in front of this many people you know um, but there will definitely be some correction involved and different things like that because really they they haven't arrived they're being sanctified I guess we could say um, slowly some more than others um, we kind of brought a variety of pups. It's funny. I'll come and I'll show these dogs. And one time I got done and somebody was like, 
uh, they paid more attention to the calves the whole time and how they responded to the dogs. And they had this whole message that the Lord showed them through the cattle's perspective versus the dogs. And I was like, well, you're the first person to, to, to share that with me. I'm sure glad that worked out for you. But anyways, all right. The book of Ephesians. Chapter 1. I'm just going to start here. I'm just going to start here in verse 15. <clears throat> For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. One of the things that I want to point out this morning, and it's just going to be easier for me because of how we're going to... Um, how we're going to do this over the next 20 minutes, basically, or 25 minutes. I'm going to speak a lot of the message prior to working the dogs, and then I'll implement some things as we go. But this is just kind of for, for you to gather. So each one of us here, each one of us here has a gift. Like, and we want to grow in that gifting, and we want to use it for the Lord. Unfortunately, in um, the church as a whole today, sometimes... I just feel like and this. I don't know y'all, so don't get upset with me before we even start. Sometimes we're lazy, um, and we think that uh, grace is an excuse to be lazy, when really it's to glorify God that we would actually use our gifts and work and different things like that. So I want to take a scripture in Ephesians two here. And I just just follow me uh, here, and we'll kind of di dissect this when we start working the dogs. Um, Ephesians chapter two: As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dread, dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. <clears throat> it, it, it is by grace that you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Now, I know you all have heard this scripture probably numerous times in your walk with the Lord, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And that is not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. It is very important when I do a dog demonstration that you all understand that I am not professing to think that you can work and earn your salvation by any stretch of the imagination. You understand that? It is only by Christ Jesus that you can do that. But for years, I quit reading there. Uh, I quit reading in verse 9 when it says, Not by works, so that no one could boast. For me, that was a license to do nothing. But in verse 10, it says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Luke, you mind working Dale for a second? I... Uh, we're going to start with a little bit more of our broke dogs. And our, our goal, obviously, these are three like Holstein cross calves and they're dog broke. Uh, do you all understand what that means? That means they've seen a dog. They're easy to work. It's not a... Um, but we just want to be able to handle cattle. We want to be able to replace somebody else's body and put someone out there. And so what we try to do is... We don't try to step out and make the dog do just everything. We mean something in the big picture, but what we really want is for them to be able to just handle them a little bit. So if Luke doesn't mind, if you'll just move them around a bit.
Okay, so um, Luke was using uh, whistle commands. A lot of times we'll start with just voice commands and eventually add whistle. And a whistle is so that if they're like three or 400 yards out, they can just hear, hear that a lot better. But it's funny because like even me, I, I see a good dog that works and I want it. That's just the problem I've got for some reason. So usually it's more so than I have money in my wallet too, but I do want it. But anyways, everybody wants a good cattle dog if they've got cattle. Would you agree with that? Okay. When, we, when I started reading in Ephesians 2, it talked about how by nature we were children of wrath. Do you know that do not raise your hand if you have ever done this, okay? Nobody wants to know. But if you have ever shot a dog that has been chasing your cows that wasn't your dog, because you, for a lot of reasons, they were going to tear something up, it's your livelihood, and somebody's dog isn't kept up, and they're, it's a bad situation. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not raising my hand because I did that. I'm praising the Lord right now, okay? <laughs> so don't... Um, so, but that same dog is doing what he was created to do. You understand what I'm saying? But he is doing it on his own. All right? Like, it's by God's grace that we are saved. It is by God's grace that he even stepped in and said, this is a lost and dying world. They need me. You understand what I'm saying? And that is what the process looks like. And it's so that someday... At some point, we can achieve this goal to be used by God. And it's the same with our dog. It's like, man, we just want him to be helpful. We just want him to actually do something. It takes a lot of work. It takes a, it's, it's frustrating. Me and Luke worked a bunch of pups yesterday. And if you want, if you have low blood pressure and you want high blood pressure, like work a dog, work a young dog for a bit, okay? Um, so what's it look like? Where does it begin? Well, for us, it starts with puppies. When we get puppies, the most important thing is that they be socialized. It's just that they be brought up around people and stuff and things like that. My best thing that can happen with pups is kids play with them. You know, they just got to get where they're kind of used to stuff and be around things and things like that. But then there comes a day that it is time to put some like parameters on what they're doing. So now we're going to expose them. We're not going to shelter them. We're going to expose them a little bit. Your minds can go wherever you want to. It doesn't matter if you got kids or whatever, but like we can't keep them out of the world. You understand what I'm saying? Like it, and if the goal wasn't to do that, it was that, that they would be influenced. Um, I'll take July here. I'm not sure how old this dog is. Jacob, this is a, a, a litter mate to your dog. Um, 10 months. Okay, 10 months old. It's a good age to get going. So Now, I'm not a big fan of them jumping on me, but there'll be a time that that's no more. Okay, all right, let's get you lined out here just a little bit here. Right now, like, like... So we can see the big picture, right? Like the big picture is I, I really want this thing to work cattle. I can't teach that, right? Like that is just a, a God-given gift, and they don't all have it. But usually when we, because of pedigrees and different things like that, we can kind of try to help that just a bit. But when it first starts, the last thing I want to do is be too hard on this dog for the things that I don't like and try to teach her everything at once. I just kind of want her to look and be interested. This will be the fourth day that I've put this, this dog on calves. I just last week started exposing her to calves. I had exposed her to some goats this summer 
just to kind of get her to work and I kind of wanted her to respect my flag a little bit. So a lot of times with these, I have never downed her on cattle, which means ask her to lie down because I didn't want her to associate. Now I have asked her to lie down and sometimes I'll teach one to lay down by actually pull it, just making them uncomfortable. Like I'll just tell her down, down, and I'll just kind of make her just uncomfortable, down, 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 down. There you go. You think I have to step on the rope to make her go down, right? I just got to make her uncomfortable. I just got to make the right thing easy and the wrong thing difficult. And I want to do it when we're not on cat. Down, down, ah, down, down, down. Good girl. Hey, take it easy. I don't want to do any of that when I'm working cattle because I just, I don't want her to associate the two. If it goes good today and we can have about two hours three hours maybe i'll maybe get her to down on cattle here in just a second but uh, uh down down i'm just going to expose her and see if she she'll be interested at all and if she is i'm just going to let her run amok and i'm gonna let her drag that rope a little bit and i have showed her what this flag meant and there's, there's nothing but I want her to respect my position and stay on one side of the cattle. Does that make sense? Like, if she comes too far this way, I want to drive her that way. And this is what we call balancing. Where she stays... Okay, I'm going to explain something here real quick. All right, I can't think and let her do that at the same time. One of the reasons I choose this breed is because they, the, uh, uh, border collies tend to be quiet dogs. With yearlings, it don't matter as much, but with pairs, if you have a dog that barks, that has calves, a lot of times, if the mamas are good mamas, it'll draw them to the attention, and it's just kind of a wreck a little bit. So, did y'all notice how she worked really, like, quiet until she got kicked? And then she was like, okay, I don't know what to do with all this stuff. You know, I'm just trying to just trying to figure it out. Well, the problem is I got to help her be confident and not create an issue. She is not barking because she's weak. She is barking because she's excited. Like, and that usually exists for the first couple weeks and usually will disappear after that. If it doesn't disappear... I haven't found out in Ephesians where it fully gives me the ability to let her go. But uh, if it doesn't disappear, they just don't work for me. So my goal is for her to work a little more quiet um, and just help her in that regard. So I cannot keep her from getting hurt. I just can't do it. I have to just trust that there are going to be some things that she is going to learn outside of my teaching, but that God's going to be good in that okay we're gonna let her work just a little bit more what's that uh your your pup all right sis look alive soldier come on let's do something just a little bit don't bark just don't bark we'll be good me and you'll get along just fine i just want her to balance a little bit she cut me off there but i was behind so I'm just going to, I'm going to keep blocking that deal and we're going to now try to get her quiet. We're going to keep asking her just to balance off the backside. This right here is really easy to get if a dog wants to work. Okay, this is good. She's backed off the cattle. <coughs> we're going to, I've never asked her to down on cattle and I'm going to ask her to here in just a second. Now, see how she's, I can dictate her going left or right with my body position in this flag. You see that? Can you all see it? She's balancing. She's about to go left because I'm going to block her here. Now she's going to go right because I'm going to block her here. It's real easy. I'm just going to add commands to that. Okay? So, if I know she's going to go that way, I'm going to say, come by. Away to me. And I'm going to do a lot of it. <laughs> and pretty soon... I'm going to try to not use my flag 
then pretty soon I'm going to try to not use my body and I'm going to see if she is actually programming what I'm asking her to do. Wait a minute. Now to get her to down, I really want to get between her and the cattle. Down, 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 down. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There we go. Nice work. We'll ask her one more time and I'll stop her. I'm going to get between her and the cattle. Down, 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 down. Good girl. That'll do. Here. Good girl. Okay. Okay. You're done. I'm going to let her come over here just for a second. Uh, uh, she looked better than she did last night. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, Luke, what's this dog's name? Okay, I don't work Luke's dog. This is this is unscripted here. Um, this dog, Luke, was telling me just last week. He was like, "I think I got a dud." So she's full sister uh, to the one I just worked, and I'm gonna work a sibling of theirs that's a litter mate, but a lot older. He's like four years old but it's out of this same cross. I'll work him here in a second. This dog right here, he said, just wouldn't go to cattle. Well, yesterday, she turned on. I mean, it just overnight, but it just took diligence. It's like, okay, we'll just keep, keep. we're just going to keep exposing. We're not going to give up. We're going to keep this and that. I'm going to see if she'll work for me. I want to be careful how much I do with my flag because, man, we don't want to. It, it's, a, it's a fine line of what's going to make her pull off stock and what's going to keep her on stock. So before, before, like my pup, I would block from coming across the inside. This is like no man's land. Don't cut me off, okay? Because when you cut me off, it means I'm working for myself. You mean nothing. That's what it means, Okay. But I am okay with that right now because I'd just be happy for her to do anything. Does that make sense? I can steer the desire later, but for now I'm just going to do everything I can. So she can do anything she wants. If I feel like she can handle a little pressure with the flag, I'll, get, I'll put it on her. That's all right. Just enough that she doesn't really know what's going on here. And pretty soon, she doesn't know it. But let's just say I want to put these cattle over by Janet and them, okay? And I want to use this dog that knows nothing to do it. Well, I'm going to use my body position, this flag. I'm just going to keep the door closed over here. That's no man's land, too. She's going to figure that out the hard way here in just a second. Let's see if we can do this, sis. That's all right. We're going to let her do that. Okay, that was in the rib cage. That wasn't that wasn't real pleasant. This dog knows absolutely nothing. But because of what I know and the big picture, we can still get something done even with immaturity. Does that does that make sense? Well, um I want a dog that won't work, but uh I didn't think so. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I always have a I always have a dog on the, forgive, like, don't take this the wrong way. I always have a dog on the chopping block, is what we say. It's a really nice way is what, when I'm saying that. But it's just, when you're raising dogs, you always have a dog 
that you have a lot of hope for and you put a lot of time in a lot of feed in I just got rid of two of them coming back uh, from Colorado just a month ago um, my daughter's boyfriend ended up with one of them that's kind of funny if you think about it <laughs> I'm sorry uh, I, yeah you can laugh dads yeah it was a coal by the way and so no I, he really does show a little bit of interest but I, I've exhausted my efforts with him and said if you want to try him you can try him or whatever a lot of times when we'll work a dog like that we'll get more out of it in a message like this because there's one thing that you can't do okay you can't train want to do you understand what I'm saying guys <clears throat> that is something that through the Holy Spirit it just gets it grows and it, it, it doesn't and then as like a pastor or a teacher or a leader of some sort then we guide it do you understand what I'm saying we guide it and once we can guide it we can work something will y'all turn moss loose for a second okay okay perfect down so this dog those two pups that I just worked this dog is their big brother okay he's a litter mate but he's like so they're 10 months old he's he's four four years old probably something like that wait a me wait a me wait a me okay okay let's turn this thing off here I got to be, it's weird when I'm trying to talk to the dogs that's coming out the speaker. This dog is not what I call like a trial dog. Um, a trial dog's real refined and listen, but this is probably one of the strongest dogs I've ever owned and has a lot of stamina. Um, he can go long days, he can do a lot, and a lot of times he's not very mechanical. And so, um, I've had dogs I could trial that's not as strong as he is, but it's 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 pretty interesting for me that I would probably consider him one of my best dogs, but there are still some down there are still some holes. But he is different from other dogs. Does that make sense? So like everybody in this church body is not the same, okay? But it is if you have been placed in a place of leadership or even in a friendship, say you're the person who is the encourager, it is important to see their qualities and it's important to build on them down, down. And where in a setting like this, the fact that he won't just stay down frustrates me sometimes. But because of that, he ex down. He excels in the big picture most of it down down most of the time he is working like groups of four or five hundred yearlings and i don't have to talk to him i don't have to communicate him it, it's kind of a pretty cool down down it's kind of pretty cool just to know the apostle paul story and how he ministered to, to people and his his personality his god-given gifts if you will you know and so what i'm going to do with this down down what i'm going to try to do with this dog is so you've seen as a those pups they kind of want to balance and be on the back side of them wait a minute we're just going to do the same thing with this older dog okay but then i'm going to try to just step out of the picture uh, uh, he naturally still it's his foundation. He still wants to bring cattle to me. Down, down. Wait a minute. Down, down, down. So here's my goal. Down, down. Okay, okay, down. I want to see, down. I want to see if he can step away from, down. 
I want to see if he can step away from that and actually drive cattle away from me, which is not down, down. It is not what he's created to do. He, he is a, a gather dog by, by just, that's just how he's bred. He wants to get around cattle and bring them to me. But if I can get him to work down, how do you guys lie? like, do y'all wish the church was full of people like this dog right here that was like, really, no, sit down, down, seriously, there's a job to do, I just want down, down, really, I just want to work, that's all I want to do, down. And you're constantly being like, hey, down, down. Take it easy. Okay? We're going to try to put some direction to what we're doing here, all right? Okay? I'm going to step out of the picture here, and I'm going to have to growl at him a little bit. That's how we communicate. Not everybody does that. It's, I'm going to take this thing off for a second. Down. Down. Okay. Y'all let me know if this guy gets up if I don't see him here for a second. Down. Okay, throw me the chain. Yeah, sure. No nice work. He's got a really good down on him and a real good stay when I do this. He's awesome. Like, really... He won't go, he won't, he won't go farther than a foot and a half from right there. That, uh, could, <clears throat> these dogs have what they're like, their nature is, right? And their nature is, have you ever, like, ever heard everybody say, oh yeah, he's a good cow dog, he's always in the gate. Anybody ever heard that said before? I get a lot of dog folks here. Yeah, Okay. <laughs> Yeah, they're being sarcastic because they are always in the gate, and that's because their handler is in the wrong position because they are where they're supposed to be. They're 180 degrees from, and you're trying to push the cattle through the gate, and he's trying to push them back. Does that make sense? It's not his nature to get between me and the cattle and push them away. It's just not who he is. But in me... He can be there, and he can work there, and he can be effective. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what the Lord wants to do in your life, and that's what the Lord wants to do in my life. He wants to take this out. Uh, you might make the comment a lot of times, that's just not me. It's not designed to be you. It's designed to be Christ in you. That's the mystery of the gospel. And then he can be glorified. So don't close the door on what he wants to do in your life because it's not you. Be open to what the Lord wants to do and know that the one who sees the big picture will ultimately, ultimately be the one who gets glorified and you will grow in your faith. Brad, do you mind coming up? Again, I know Brad. Guys, thank you. I know it's short. We'll do some more in the future. And uh, yeah, I'd love to visit with you afterwards.
I almost died. Did you see that? Thank you, BJ. Thank you guys so much. Can you guys give them one more round of applause? I love it. It's just fascinating. You know, I, I, I look, at those, look at those dogs and see how they work. And, you know, that last one, or the one before, I think, no, it was that one. Kept wanting to get up, get up, get up, get up. He paralleled it to us wanting to be eager, you know, to do the work of the Lord. But all I could see was that he was continually getting up from where he was supposed to be. And I think a lot of times you and I are like that, is that instead of, and we've talked a lot about sitting in the chair, you know, just kind of resting, be still and know that he is God. Just, just sit there, just sit there. And be still until it's time to move, until it's time to respond, until it's time to go. A lot of us, we want to get up and go, and we want to be God. You know, we want to, we want to do God's job. A lot of times we, out of reaction, we want to get up and try to fix things ourselves. We want to try to be the answer. When God's just saying, just wait, just be still. Just sit there when the timing is right. We don't need to react. We need to be still sometimes. We need to listen to the Lord and wait for the right timing because just because we don't see God working doesn't mean he isn't at work. We just have to be obedient. We have to rest in him. We have to have faith. You know, we have to realize and understand that God is able to do way more than we are, right? Right? So many times we feel like we're the answer. So many times we feel like we're the solution. You know, there might be some of you that are here today. And, you know, you've just been trying to be the answer. You've just tried to be the solution. You've tried and tried and tried and tried. Everything else. And if I were to ask you and you were to be honest... And I were to say, how's that, work? how's that worked for you? If you were to be honest, you'd say it, it hasn't worked. Well, I would ask you then, isn't it time to try Jesus? You've tried everything else. Maybe you've, you've tried things that have led to addiction. Maybe you've, maybe you've leaned on, on other people. Right? Maybe you tried to make so much money that you thought that you could find happiness in that. Right? Whatever it is, you tried to find that solution and that answer. But I want to tell you, there's only one answer. And his name is Jesus. Jesus is better than any amount of money. Jesus is better than any drug. Jesus is better than any solution you can possibly find. He is Hope. Without him, we have no hope. We're nothing. And, you know, I don't think that it's just by chance that you ended up here today if you don't know him. I know that God is so big and loves you so much that he actually worked it out for you to be here today so that you could hear this incredible message and see these creative illustrations, these dogs at work. Just so the Lord could get your attention and say, hey, it's time to try me. It's time, to le- it's time to let me be the solution that you've been looking for. And so I just want to extend that invitation to you today. If you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day for you to say yes to Jesus. Would you bow your heads with me today? I want to extend that invitation to you now. If you don't know him. I'm not asking if you believe that he exists. I'm not asking if you prayed a prayer when you were 12 years old. I'm not asking if you've ever been baptized. I'm asking you if you know him. Jesus said, the sheep know my voice. Just like you saw BJ here. And you saw Luke and they were working these dogs. These dogs know their voice. They know them. Does God know your voice? Does Jesus 
have a relationship with you? Do you have a relationship with him? Do you know each other? Do you have a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that's contagious? If you don't, this is your moment. Nobody's looking around, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. This is just me, you, and the Lord right now. And I just want to ask you, if you were to die today, Lord forbid, but if you were to die today, would heaven be your home? If not, I want to encourage you right now to make the decision to confess to God and admit to him that you're a sinner just like I am. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He is the only way to get to the Father and confess him as Lord of your life. If that's you today and you say, Pastor, I need to make that decision, would you just raise your hand where you are? And we're going to pray as a church family today. Thank you. I see a hand. Anybody else today? would make that decision and say, I need Jesus as my personal Savior. I want to live in heaven forever when I leave this earth. Anybody else today? Thank you, Lord. Church family, let's pray this prayer together if we could. Father, forgive me of my sins. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I confess him to be Lord of my life. Help me, Jesus, to know your voice. I don't want religion. I want relationship. I want the real. I want the life-changing relationship with Jesus. You are my hope. Help me to live for you. Help me to be obedient. Help me to make Jesus famous. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Today, as we're wrapping up our 14-year celebration, we want to take a moment to honor all the pastors that serve here at Mountain Movers. You know, Brad and I, we started this church, but we couldn't possibly have reached and ministered to all the people that we do week in and week out if it wasn't for an incredible team. So if at this time I could just invite Willie and Courtney Barr, they're our kids' pastors. If you'll come join us up here. We get the gifts. Grant and Stacy Hendricks are our Connections Pastor. Everybody's got to know Grant. Who doesn't know Grant and love Grant? And Brandy and Brandon, they are our pastors over Life Groups, our discipleship ministry. If they'll join us, both of them. We don't get Brandon on stage very often unless we just absolutely make him leave the sound booth. As they're coming, you know, I also just want to tell you how... The church is not buildings, guys. That's one of the reasons Brad and I, I know it's a little bit chilly out here. I'm probably colder than anybody. But you know what? The church is not the building. We want you to just know that very clearly at Mountain Movers. It's not the buildings at all. God has blessed us. We started in that little mobile home. We moved into that farmhouse. We've renovated. We've built on. We've done all that. And that's amazing. And sometimes we get caught up on what people have possession-wise with buildings. But that's not what it is. Do you know what Mountain Movers Church is? It's the people. It's you. Look around. You are mountain movers. The reason mountain movers is amazing is because we've got incredible leaders, yes, but it's because of you. Every week, you go out and you tell somebody about this church. Every week, you tell somebody about Jesus. You wear a Make Jesus Famous shirt, and you bring them to the house of God. And because it, guys, we've seen over 6,000 people come on campus at Mountain Movers in the last 14 years. We've been able to minister to so many people from the nursery, from the infant all the way to those that are seniors until the day that we get to stand and celebrate their life because their legacy is now ended and they're going on home. So today we just want to say a huge thank you to these guys. They each have a gift from us to them. This church honors them. Again, this is Pastors Willie and Courtney. They're your kids' pastors. Give them a hand. <laughs> Next to them is Brandon and Brandy. They are over our Life Group Ministries. And down on the end, Grant and Stacy Hendricks. We couldn't have the connection around here without Pastor Grant. We love them. Also, it's because of the generous givers and donors at Mountain Rivers Church that you look around and we are so very, very blessed. So thank you, every one of you that are faithful givers. And today I just want to remind you that you can give back to God your tithe and your offering. Today we're going to do it only digitally. So you can give back through the app or the website mountainmoverschurch.org at any point in time. But we just want to encourage you to remember to always put God first in your giving. Now if you're one of those who, huh? Are you trying to cut me off in my own outline? <laughs> 
I'm sorry, it wouldn't be appropriate to move on from this moment unless we honored our pastors. Can you give it up for Brad and Misty Helton? Everything that goes on here is because the passion and the vision and the heartbeat of somebody who was stirred and called by God and went and did it. And I know that every single one of us that comes out, anybody that's in, been impacted or been uh, poured into by Misty and Brad, you guys are eternally grateful, but you are inspired. I know that you have to be inspired with these great leaders because I am so thankful that they have given their lives for the call of God, but also poured into us individually. And I know that I speak for all of us, but I know that you, if you were standing here, you would say the same thing. So I encourage you to blow up their phones, blow them up, and just tell them how much we appreciate them. Get on Facebook, blow it up, tell them how much we appreciate them. But would you give them a round of applause for their sacrifice for these last 14 years? I can't tell you the impact, and I know that all of you would say the same thing. So we've come up with a little pastor appreciation of our own for you guys. If you guys don't know, we've tried to send the pastors away on vacay for a really long time. They're too passionate. <laughs> so this is our opportunity to try to get them again to take a little bit of time for themselves. So we love you guys. That's a, a vacay away from here. We can handle it maybe for a weekend or so. So you guys make sure to tell them how much you appreciate them because this None of this would have happened. None of these lives, these 6,000 people that we've seen for these 14 years would have been impacted and changed if they wouldn't have had the ambition and the passion and the gall to get out and do what God called them to do. So I hope you're inspired by that, and I hope you will lead in that way with your families and with those around you and just go out and reach people for Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right. Before we pray, we just want to say one more big thank you. And if our four kids would stand wherever they're at, some of them are serving. There they are in the front row. They need to be at the altar. There you go. I just want to say, and Ty standing right over here, he's running a camera for our online family. We love our online family. We just want to say, you know, our four kids were babies when we came here. They didn't ask. They didn't sign up for it. They didn't ask to be a part of Mountain Rivers Church. And when they were little bitty, AJ was old enough to talk. The others weren't quiet. And AJ used to cry and say, I hate mountain members. I hate mountain members. And it was because kids' church was his bedroom. And, you know, but as the years have gone on and on, we are so blessed. We never want to leave out our children who paid an ultimate sacrifice to be a part of this pastor's family. But now every week they serve with us in ministry, and we couldn't be more proud of our four teenagers. Would you give me a hand? Once again, guys, we're so incredibly grateful for each and every one of you. Over the last 14 years, we've seen people come. We've seen people go. Um, and, you know, you think to yourself, a lot of people have, have come and a lot of people have gone. And even those who have gone, we know that seeds have been planted all over the place. We know that there's people uh, that, are, that are living for God today. They're living for Jesus today because they, they, that seed was planted in them while they were here. And we are just so incredibly grateful for all the things that God has done. We're thankful for you. Uh, it, I say this a lot to people, but it truly is an honor uh, for us as pastors to serve you, to serve this church family. We love you guys beyond what you could ever imagine. And we, it's just such an incredible honor to serve you and your families and to help you to become the person that God has called you to be and to help you to do the things that God has called you to do. And guess what? One day, we're all going to get to experience eternity in heaven together. And we're going to take as many people with us as we possibly can. We're going to fill heaven as we make Jesus famous here. So thank you guys for 14 amazing years. The best is yet to come. Thank you for braving the cold weather this morning. Uh, we just want to bless you, uh, before you before you go today, uh, if we can. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you, God, that you can use ordinary people to do extraordinary things with just a little bit of obedience and faith. Uh, Father, we just glorify you today. We thank you, God, for all the things that you've done. We thank you for everything that you're doing right now. 
We thank you, God, for all the things that you are about to do. We know, God, that the best is yet to come. We thank you, God, today for who you are. We pray that you would continually be made famous in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Love you guys. Have a great week. Wednesday, Wednesday night, we'll see you. Wednesday night, Accelerate Life Groups. We love you guys. Have a great week.